Hello, my name is Garrett Jackson, and this is my audience for my persuasive speech. Hi, I'm John. Hi, I'm Alex. Hi, I am Bryce. Hello, I am Hunter. Hi, I'm Emily. Sweet. The Urban Dictionary defines show choir as the extra awesome extracurricular activity at schools mostly in the Midwest. It is where high school students prance around on giant risers, duct tape the bottom of their shoes, use enough Aquanet to cause lung cancer, sleep on the floors of buses, talk trash about that one girl who can't do a jazz can to save her life, and at the end of the day, go home with a few sparkly trophies that make for great weapons if someone is being a little bit too obnoxious on the bus right home. The guys wear more makeup than David Bowie, and girls aren't afraid to strip in front of a large crowd of boys. Now this definition that I just read to you might evoke some painful images or nasty stereotypes about show choir, but I'm here today to tell you that through my over a decade of experience in the show choir community, that these stereotypes are not how show choir is actually supposed to be. And that is why I am motioning that we work together so that show choir can have the same respect and recognition that it deserves against other extracurricular activities such as sports. So let's start digging down and finding where these problems actually occur. So our two main problems that we're going to focus on today are the stereotypes that are putting a huge plague in smearing the image of Shofar and the fact that many people don't give Shofar the recognition that it deserves. So if we look at the Shofar stereotypes, there are many of them, but they all seem to focus around the idea that Shofar just sets up a group of selfish divas that only care about themselves and winning by any means necessary. So I went looking online and I found a couple jokes from laughgap.com and these jokes are just going to help you guys understand how these stereotypes work and how they get set up. So two of the jokes that I found are, how many sopranos does it take to screw in a light bulb? Just one. She holds the bulb and the entire world revolves around her. The other joke is, what is the difference between a singer and a terrorist? You can negotiate with a terrorist. Although these jokes may seem somewhat funny at first, they're actually quite demeaning and derogatory towards the whole show choir community and fine arts in general. And that's why these kind of things need to be stopped and actually monitored a little bit more. Because if we're telling jokes like this and we're thinking like this, that's setting up a situation where many people who are outside of the fine arts community or the show choir community start believing the actual jokes and picturing show choir in these kind of settings, which it is not. If we keep moving on, we can see that people struggle to recognize that show choir is an extracurricular activity just like sports. Both require effective teamwork through communication and personal dedication. And I could make an argument that show choir actually requires more of this than most sports would. So if we go looking back into the internet, we can go to debate.org where I looked over thousands of debates and came to one between show choir and sports and whether or not show choir is a sport. And this is one of the responses I found. You don't go to a gym to do show choir. There is no specific area like a field or a stadium where you do it. Congrats, you're singing and dancing. Those aren't sports. Now, the person has somewhat of a legitimate claim in the fact that singing and dancing is not a sport. That's up for debate right now, but I can tell you that some school systems are now <laughs> offering PE credits to those people who do fine arts such as show choir or marching band. So that is almost irrelevant at this point. His claim that there is no specific area where show choir takes place is completely irrelevant. Show choir takes places in theaters, or you could even make an argument that it takes places in your community. When I was in show choir in high school, every single year around the Christmas time, we went around to old folk homes, residents, anywhere to help go cheer up people, and it was amazing the kind of reactions that we got and the differences we were making. So you can even argue that show choir doesn't have to take place in one specific area, but that it's more of a community group-based thing. If we keep moving on, I took the liberty of setting up a Twitter poll a couple days ago, and I asked three main questions. These questions were, is show choir a sport? Keep in mind, because it's off of Twitter, many of the people who actually answered these questions are fine arts people because those are the people who follow me on Twitter and the people I follow. Either way, the responses are still valid and actually a little bit surprising compared to what someone might actually think. So our first question being, is show choir a sport? Had 137 views and votes. 19% of the people said yes, against an 81% no. If we move on, I asked, should show choir have the same respect and recognition as sports? 53 votes, 62% said yes, against the 38% no. And this is the real one that actually kind of hurt a little bit. And this is from fine arts people giving honest answers. 
does Shofar receive the same respect and recognition as sports? 11% said yes, 89% said no. This is the really hard thing to think about. The reason that these problems are being the way they are is because of people like this. We, we should have the same recognition, but we don't get it. So now that we've looked at where our problems lie, let's start looking at some of the causes so that we can eventually find solutions to them. So, Shofar stereotypes and a lack of recognition can be contributed to recent media portrayals of Shofar and little to no in-school exposure. So, if we take a look at a couple video clips that I am going to set up for us right now, we can actually see some of the ways that this is actually happening. This is a clip from Glee. Let me just watch it. Don't get too excited, it's not that long. The McKinley High School Devo Award goes to... Is it Santana? I swear. So if we look at this incidence, although it is very entertaining in the setting of Glee, this is absolutely, absolutely not how any show for our situation is set up or we want any of our directors to set them up. No director sets up a diva on. That's just competing competition, not in a healthy way at all, and it creates large, large divisions within the choir. Of course, there are people who will tell you that there are fights that happen in show choir, and that's true, but they're usually resolved in a week or two, and the group bonds and grows stronger from the actual event that happens. This is completely <laughs> just so that people view it. It's kind of like a reality TV show where everything gets amped up more than it actually is, and they create more problems that are actually happening in real life. And this is where people start to get the real portrayal of show choir and the media's portrayal of it mixed up. And if we look onto our second, number from Pitch Perfect, we can see yet another reason. After this short that ad, is not that easy, but this is not a sponsored helps. video. This sentence is grammatically correct, but it's wordy and hard to read. It undermines the writer's message and the word choice is bland. Grammarly's cutting edge technology helps you craft compelling understanding. <laughs> So nothing like a show choir competition would happen. If you know anything about Pitch Perfect or you've seen this movie, you know that this is actually an acapella competition that's going on. And acapella competitions are nothing like show choir competitions. This that you just saw from Pitch Perfect is actually more closely related to the Northwest Jazz Choir Festival that I described in my last speech in 1968, where the focus is actually on the singing. The reason that Pitch Perfect added in the dancing is because if they're gonna sell a movie, they can't just have people standing and singing. They needed to add something that people wanted to see to make it more entertaining. And that's why people start to think, oh, show for our competitions are people just kind of doing a couple moonwalks, mostly singing and a couple spins or whatnot. And that's nothing compared to what's going on right now. Sadly, we're in the ballad portion of this show. So once we get through it and we get into the guys, girls feature and the closer, you'll actually start to see some of the choreography that real show choirs go with. If we keep moving on, um, we can look at some of the actual, um, causes that are still happening right now. So, uh, show choirs perform in the community. Some areas it's actually very rarely, depending on your district or what school system you're in. But another thing that is also very saddening is that compared to their community, within their own school is even smaller. When I was in high school, we performed at exactly one pep rally my four years that I was there in show choir. It was my sophomore year, and after that we did absolutely nothing. 
we had our, oh, opening night, come see us. But it was never a situation where people were there. People had to come. And that's where it really, really, really starts to hurt the fine arts department, especially at the show fires, is that the people who come to support it are the people who are already in it. You don't get new people exposed to it. The only sports kids that I have known to come in to any of the show fire competitions or show fire events are sports kids who are in show fire. The other people that come are your parents and maybe a friend that is already in the fine arts department. By having kids at these pep rallies, it really helps because kids are already there. The sports kids are there, the chess club kids are there, the brainiacs are there, they all get to see it. But because of administration support and the administration rather having the football team do a quirky little dance or something like that, they don't really get to share anything from the fine arts department and that really hurts. <coughs> so now that we've established our problem, the causes of our problem, let's start looking at some of the solutions. In order to solve the problems plaguing the shofar community, we must help educate the public on what real shofar consists of and continue to expose our students to shofar as well. So if we look at the two things that we have here, distinguishing lines between real and media's portrayal of shofar, and then also exposing schools to their own local shofars, we can see that there are two solutions that work for both of these situations. One, administrative support. So if we actually get our administrators to back us up on the shofar community, it's gonna expose a lot more people to it. If we can get just a couple extra kids, sports kids, like football players who would never really go to show fire, they saw me pitch perfect once or twice and they went, yeah, that's not me. If we can just get them in the same room and something that's happening show fire wise, it would be wonderful. You don't see any administration going, like, hey, our show fire is going to a competition, let's bus a couple buses out. When it comes to state or any other kind of football game or something like that, they're all over it. Kids get out of school, all sorts of stuff. You don't see that ever for anything in the fine arts department, and it's really sad. So I would argue that we should start doing that. And another thing is to get our communities more into it, televised competitions is something we can do. Football teams, volleyball teams, everything. You have your Big Ten network, that's all sports. We have nothing for the fine arts community. Every once in a while, there will be a musical on TV, a new one that's coming out, or a revival show or something, but that's not your own community doing something that you can rally behind and get together with. So by setting up televised competitions, you can have your community join together to do something and cheer on your show fires. So, in conclusion, if we can expose our communities to the show fire community and gain more administrative support with our school, people will be able to distinguish actual show fire from the media's portrayal of it. If we can achieve this, stereotypes will decrease and show fire will be rightfully recognized, giving it the same amount of respect as sports. The Urban Dictionary closed up their definition with this statement, and I really want you guys to pay attention to it. We sweat, we get sprained ankles, curse, and at the end of the day, made some good friends and had awesome times. Now to me, this statement is true for both showfire and sports alike. And that is why we need to help earn showfire the respect it deserves. I challenge each of you to support your local showfires this upcoming season by going to one of their events and exposing members of your community to Shofar by bringing them along with you. Thank you, and go Mavs.